Okay, let's talk about Framepack Studio today, but not the original one made by Colin Nerbs, but it is another version being made by another hero called uh, Lost Crusos. I will leave the link in the descriptions below if you wish to read more about it. Basically, Framepack Studio adds in a bunch of features beyond what we originally had, such as the original Framepack and the F1, which I've done a few videos on how to install it for your RTS 50 series GPU. You can check those out if you wish to install it from the original creator GitHub page instead. It also has a few more main features for the Framepack Studio, such as uh, selecting the start and end frame, uh, which is only available for the original Framepack only, not for the F1. Uh, second feature is using LoRas for specific motions if you require. And also you are able to do batching tasks and uh, queuing tasks uh, instead of waiting for one to finish before you can start generating another. Lastly, it can also allow you to use text to image, which I myself very, very rarely use, but it's still good to have that option. This version of Framepack Studio has been tweaked to have a very straightforward installation process. Although it's still not a one-click installation, it's relatively easy if you follow the steps accordingly. Basically, you just need to clone the repository, create a virtual environment, install the requirements, which includes all the RTX 50 series specific PyTorch components to make it work, uh, let the studio download the required models for us, and finally, to start the app. So one key system requirement is the need to have Python 3.12 installed. If you don't have this version, you might need to search for Python 3.12 download in Google, click the link and scroll down to download and install it. I already have a version installed, so I won't be demonstrating an installation. One key thing to note is that if you already have an install uh, existing Python in your system, then you do not need to add Python to path when installing 3.12 as the command will specifically call, the command that is being used to download this uh, Framepack Studio will specifically call for Python 3.12 to install the virtual environment. So there's no need to add it to path in this case. At the end of the video, I'll also show a simple trick to automatically run the app without manually activating the virtual environment every single time before running it. So stay till the end to know how it's being done. Uh, this For info, this uh, setup will be done on my RTS 5070 Ti GPU and it should work for all the uh, Blackwell 50 series GPU, be it RTX 5060, 5070, 5080 or 5090. Before we begin the walkthrough, uh, I will appreciate a like, comment and subscribe to help push this video to the right community who might find it useful. First, create a folder and name it whatever that you like. I name it Framepack Studio Test since I already have one successfully installed already. Uh, next, we will JIT clone the code from the GitHub page and you will get a set of files and folders required to get it started. Uh, this is just a cloning step, kind of like downloading stuff from the internet. So you can actually delete the clone files and redo it again if you did something wrong or edited the file incorrectly and don't know what went wrong. If you delete the clone files, you can run jclone again uh, and paste the uh, repository web page and uh, retrieve the files accordingly as shown. Next, type cd call framepack studio to go to the new directory and type dir to see the files clone. One key file to take note of is the requirements.txt, which we will run later. This file has been configured to download PyTorch for QDA 12.8, which is compatible with our RTS 50 series cards. We will now create a virtual environment, but before that, I want to demonstrate the different Python versions used when creating a virtual environment. First, I type Python dash dash version, and I will see my system's Python version as 3.13.2, which is not the version required to install Framepack Studio. I type where Python, and I can see a few different installations I have, which includes my Miniconda, which runs on Python 3.13.2, 3.2, and a Python 3.12 not set to path. Now I type py 3.12 m venv.env win. 
which commands Python to use my Python 3.12 specifically to create a virtual environment called dot env underscore win. Next, I need to activate it using the command dot env underscore win slash script slash activate. You see that it's activated when there is a bracket covering the dot env underscore win in front of the path. Now you can safely install all the requirements in the virtual environment without worrying about any of these dependencies affecting your other projects that require the same items but of different version. Let it run the security scans if required and it will install a bunch of stuff. Once the installation is completed, you can either run the command python appstudio.py dash dash in browser immediately to start your app or if you close the browser after the installation is completed and wish to start the app from the beginning you need to go to your core underscore frame pack studio main folder type cmd and retype the script to activate the virtual environment which is the dot env underscore win slash script slash activate before you type python appstudio.py dash dash in browser to start the app every single time. As you can see, Xformer's flash attention and search attention are all installed, but from what I know, only search attention is activated as the main priority. If it's found, then Xformer and flash attention will not be activated. And now we are back with an updated look using the frame pack studio. Take note as we did not set any models path, all the models will be re-downloaded from scratch. I will likely archive my old frame pack installation, uh, my original 8 frame pack plus the F1, uh, once I get used to this uh, frame pack studio. Hence, I'm okay to download a fresh set of models. Feel free to tinker around with the different settings uh, some of which are new to me, some are pretty familiar, but uh, I won't be going through all the settings since I am as new to this as any one of you that is watching this video. For demonstration purposes, I will use my previous picture to do a near 100% replica generation from my previous video just for a clear testing purposes. Now, welcome back after a short skip. But I conclude that with the same settings, the quality of the generation and time to render is roughly the same. So this frame pack studio does exactly the same as previous installation. Plus, you get to use all the additional features such as first and last frame for the original model, use of LoRa's, batch tasks, etc. etc. And it's definitely a good upgrade from the original. Now let's talk about quality of life shortcuts. When you close the app and wish to use it again another time, if you do not activate the virtual environment and instead just double click frame packs appstudio.py file, the app will not load, forcing you to always go through a tedious process of typing cmd, activate the environment and run the uh, python appstudio.py, which is a hassle. Instead, let's create a shortcut to run these commands automatically. Create a text file in the main core underscore frame pack studio folder, name it whatever that you want, I name it new launch script, paste these commands inside the text file, which is echo of call dot env underscore win slash script slash activate dot bat. Followed by next line will be python appstudio.py dash dash in browser and finally with a pause. This will run all the required commands from the new file you created without needing to do it manually. Save the file but not as a .txt file, change to all files and save it with a .bat behind the name you picked which will save this as a batch file for execution of batch commands. You can delete the text file 
since it has served its purpose, just keep the dot .bat file that you have saved instead. Double click the batch file and it should work as per normal. With that, I end today's video showing how to install FramePack Studio by Los Crossos. Shout out to him for his modifications that make RTS 50 series users live a little easier. Next, I'll hibernate again on FramePack and go back to Comfy UI as I've yet to fully understand how Comfy UI works. So remember to like, comment and subscribe to push uh, this video to the right community who might find it useful. Until then, I will see you when I see you.